This is going to be a video on how to change the batteries on a bunch of kit of smoke alarms. These will all be modern alarms only. I won't be tackling vintage, but that will be another video. And I'll also be tackling first floor and other brands. For now though, we're just going to start with Kitta. Alarm number one is this. If you have one of these, you probably either have the battery model, the intelligent battery model, or the hardware model. Changing the batteries in all three of these models are basically the same. Which, what you have to do is open this up. There could also be like this yellow thing inside of it, which you can use, if I could get it out. You could just take the batteries out normally like this, but you can also just pull this depending on where it is. If it's like out, you can just do this. It'll take the batteries out for you. Then what you're gonna do is not put the new batteries in, you just want to hold the test button down for a few seconds. And sometimes you will hear something that I like to call a dying sound, which the piezo will sometimes make a noise. It doesn't do this with every alarm. It does with this one. I just don't know why it didn't do it. It's randomly powered off for no reason. But it's, it's as simple as that. You just take out the batteries. These battery flags will come up. So when you put the new batteries in, You'll have to put them in a certain way to make sure these battery flags will stay down. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You just follow the uh, the orange sticker on this bottom. So on the left side, it goes to positive. So you put the one battery in like this. And then the other battery goes in the opposite way. Push test button. And you just close it up. Not all kid alarms look like this, though. It may look similar. But this one's actually a different way to change the battery. This one in particular is a hardwired one. It's made by FireX, but I'm putting it in here since it's technically the same thing. So this one is a bit different when you change out the batteries. So you're gonna open this up and then take out the battery. In this case, it's a nine volt. So you just pull it off like this. Again, hold the test button to drain out any additional charge. If it was hardwired, you would be hearing a uh, dying sound in this case I just had it running on battery so you just you just hold this down to drain out all the battery for a little bit and then when you put in the new battery it's um pretty straightforward you just slide this in just like that you have to close the battery door because there is a hidden switch in here that will um like wait watch the watch when I close the battery door you can see the LED flash see it, this does not work if you have the battery door open. So like, here, I'll demonstrate. So it works right now. Now I'm gonna open the battery door. Now, watch what happens. It does not work anymore. So there's a hidden battery switch that turns the alarm off when you open this up. And also an FYI, if you're running this on AC power, you have to also deactivate it from its AC power source if you want to drain the additional power or else it won't work. So again, you must insert the battery and close it up. And then you're ready to go and don't forget to test. Here's another common example where you have one that looks like this. Some alarms may look like this with all these lines and some may also look like this with the four lines. They all have the same change battery depending on what it is. The escape light models take two 9 volts. Some of the other ones don't have wire harnesses since they're running on battery. Depends on what they are. So I'm just going to start with this one and then I'll do the escape light one after. This one is uh, a photoelectric model, but there are ionization models there. They all look pretty much the same and they change the batteries pretty much the same. And as you can hear, it's low battery chirp. So yeah, I guess I have to change it anyways. So what you want to do is you want to get your fingernail underneath this tab and pull it up which opens this battery door and then take out the batteries either way you want to. You could pull it up like this or you could use this tab, which uh, makes it a lot easier. And then you want to hold down the test button again. As you can see, the LED was going up, but it was dimming. And you also heard a dying sound, which is a sign that its power was being turned off. I mean, like what else can I say about it? So once all the power has been drained, 
you want to put the battery in follow the diagram right here you can see it's kind of like in, engraved into the plastic here so you can see on the left side it's positive and also make sure this battery flag is down so you want to like slide the battery in like this and then force it down and then close the battery door so you can actually attach it to your harness and put it back up on the ceiling depending on what it is and then it's back on and in some cases you might have this older one where it's uh it has all these lines and sometimes it could be running on battery changing the batteries is no different from this one because again it also takes the same nine volt battery so changing it out is pretty much the same exact thing some may also have battery flags which you have to push down as well and now for the escape light ones the escape light ones are a bit different because these take as you can see, a larger battery door, when you open this up, two 9-volt batteries. It's similar, but different. Again, you'll take this tab, and you can pull out both just like that. Hold down the test button. That was a different alarm that did that, but whatever. But yeah, you hold this down to make sure all the batteries drained out. There are modern ones that look like this. The changing the batteries are pretty much the same, so... Yeah. So putting the batteries in, again, follow this diagram and push these battery flags down. One slides in this way, force it down, and then the other one slides the opposite direction. And then close it up. And again, if it's hardwired, you would uh, have to connect it back to AC power. And it works. If your escape light, by the way, does not work when you test it, that means one of your batteries is dead. So you'll have to try and see which battery is the dead one. So you'll have to figure out which ones are more charged for this to work. Here is a very common model. I've had this one for a while now. And uh, changing the battery is like the easiest thing in this one. You'll have to, it takes a 9 volt. You'll have to pull this out any way you want. Hold down the test button until the battery's been drained out. And then you want to um, get your new battery, slide it in. It's very similar to the other alarms I just covered. In fact, I think it's a smaller version of it. You have to push this battery flag back down. Push the battery in like that. Now you can hear it chirped and it's on. So yeah, this one was pretty similar. So you may have some alarms that look like this. It's very similar to the um, this one right here, which I'll get to next. It's a, um, some are hardware, some are battery, but changing the batteries are pretty much the same other than disconnecting the wire harness if necessary. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna push down on this, which opens the battery door, then pull this out, you'll have to lift this up too. Pull that out, hold down the test button, which it actually already did for me. So, um, yeah, you hold that down. When you hear that dying sound, that means the battery's pretty much been cleared. Just hold it down for a few extra seconds, just in case. And then putting the battery in, there's a diagram in here that tells you which side goes what. So you're gonna slide the battery in this way where it says positive, slide it in, and then close it up. And it should say push test button, but this battery door is really finicky, so excuse that. But when you power it on, it should say push test button, so. Yeah, that one's very simple. So in some cases, you might have this one. There is actually two different versions, depending on if it's hardware or not. And also, some may also look like this, which um, change batteries depending on if it's hardwired or not. So in this case, this one is the battery operated model. So it actually has no battery door. So you don't have to worry about opening anything and breaking your fingernails. You just pull out the batteries, pretty pretty self-explanatory. This one does not have the, um, the little pull tab, which is kind of unfortunate, but that was later added. Hold the test button for a few seconds to drain out the rest of the battery. And then what you do after is um, 
you'll have to put the batteries in a specific order because since there's this tab right here, you'll have to put the last battery in on the top. So you gotta follow this diagram. It goes um one side, right side goes positive, one side it goes left, so the positive goes that way, and the right side goes positive. You'll know, you'll definitely know it powers on when you power this thing on. It's gonna make one really loud chirp. And it's on. Simple as that. And in some cases, they may look like this, where um, it's hardwired. It takes a uh, nine volt instead of a three double A's. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your fingernail under this. It opens in a very similar way to um, uh, these. So um, yeah, you're gonna open this up, take out the battery, this one has no foam strip apparently, but it's fine. I just realized I had the battery in the wrong way, but it's fine. Um, and then of course you're gonna drain out the battery. And also this is a different alarm, but they're the same kind of battery change. So yeah, and then you're gonna put the battery, there's a diagram that tells you. And then I think this one will also, no, it just does one quick trip. But yeah, some alarms do let you know when it's powered on. And like I said, um, hardwired ones of this will look just like, will change the battery pretty much the same way. And one of our last combo alarms that I have here is um, this one. These are the most newer kit alarms that were manufactured. Um, the way these battery change are a lot less convenient than they used to, especially comparing to what it replaced. But I'll show you how to do it anyway. This is a hardwired one in particular. The harness, um, you can't open this battery door if the harness is still in. You'll have to take this out, which may be a bit of a nuisance, but you'll eventually get it. And then opening the battery door itself, um, you have to get your fingernail in here. And then there's no, um, no pull tab, so you have to um, pull these out manually. Take these out. Again, hold the test button. And simple as that. And as for putting new batteries in, you want to, um, uh, so you can kind of see the diagram right there. It's behind the sticker, but yeah, you can still see the negative and the positive. So one battery goes in like this. Actually, you gotta put them in a certain way. You have to slide them in from this way. And then the other one slides in the same way and it and it will chirp at you. It powers on in a very similar way to the uh, to these. And there you go. Here's your battery. Swap out and don't forget to um, test. Here's another modern kit alarm. This one is a more smaller one. Changing the batteries in this one is a lot easier. Um, taking them out is pretty self-explanatory. You just pull them out in a certain way I guess oh yeah it is a certain way and then hold down the test button for a few seconds as usual as for the new batteries so when you're placing the batteries one positive goes up this way but you can't slide in like this you'll have to slide it one direction it's not a case of you could freely put it in anymore and then the other one um, positive goes this way and you slide it from from below to the top, and when you power it on, it will do a long chirp at you. And there you go. That's the one of the um, smaller modern kit alarms. All right, now to carbon monoxide alarms. So there's only a few that I really need to cover because changing out the batteries is very similar. Um, you may have ones like this, and maybe even an older version of this. This one uh, takes three AA batteries, while in this case, this one only uses two. Oh shoot, I didn't mean to do that. But taking out the batteries, I accidentally hit the test button there. But when you're taking out the batteries, you just, again, pull them out as usual. Um, and then you get to hold the test button down for a few seconds. You will get a dying sound for these units, so you will know when you powered it off. And then, Putting the new batteries back in, one negative is up top, so one goes in this way, 
positive is up top on this one, so one gets it this way, and it will do a long chirp at you, so get ready. Yep. And then it's on. Again, don't forget to test. And as for the display versions right here, um, and these older ones, these both take three double A's, but changing them out is no different from the others. And my last example for this video is this one. It's a, um, there are gas alarm versions, and, um, other versions that take this kind of style, where it has this back with this plug, which can extend. Um, the battery, if you can't find it, it's underneath this. So what you have to do is you have to like, use your fingers to get underneath this, pull this out and take it off. And then the battery's in here, you have to pull this out and it takes one of these connectors, which can break, so be careful. You just pull it off like that and it just did a dying sound, so it's already powered off. Hold the test button down anyway, maybe even the peak level if you want to. But yeah. And then as for the new battery, um, you wanna, um, it's pretty basic self-explanatory with these connectors. If you work with these connectors before, um, you'll know where it goes cause you'll just plug it in. It's not really, um, it's not rocket science. It's just, it's just one of these connectors that just plugs in. You can't really put it in the wrong way. And then as for, um, putting all the stuff back together, you want to shove this battery back in here and then put this cover back on, which goes in a very specific way and then push it forward and it's on. And as you can see, it was displaying 888. It was just testing to the display to make sure it was working. And now it just says zero. That will go away unless you plug it in. The zero is kind of like a um, AC indicator when you plug it in. So, yeah, that was the uh, kit of carbon ox alarms. And that's going to do it for this video. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a like. I'll definitely see you guys for the first sort video. I'll see you guys later.